Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. We have headsets for those who need a little help. We have professional translations, so is everybody hearing okay? Yes, can you hear okay? Can you hear me? Any translation? No? Some of them don't work, so you have to get the right ones. If they don't work, they can exchange. Hi, come on in. Welcome, welcome. So we are also joined, I think we're being joined, online. There's, we're streaming this event, and I think there'll be some people checking us out from various parts of the world. I know I have some contacts in Europe who are very interested in what we're doing. This is actually the closing of the 19th International Congress of Analytical Trilogy. And uh, my name is Richard Jones, for those who don't know me. Actually, my name is Richard Jones for everybody, but just in case <laughs> you don't know me. And I'm an English teacher at Millennium. I'm a producer of a radio program that spreads Dr. Kepi's work around the world. And I'm very happy to be with a bunch of my dear friends today talking about Norberto Kepi's work. I want to do a quick introduction for you just because I think it's important that everybody know what we're doing and why we're here. So this is Dr. Norberto Kepi. He has an office in this clinic, still sees clients, writes books, and is the orienter of a lot of work that we do in our trilogical enterprises and in our Stop the Destruction of the World Association and in many uh, projects that we work on. Dr. Kepi is the brains behind all of that, okay? Uh, he's a psychoanalyst, philosopher, social scientist. His background is Brazilian and Austrian. He has Austrian nationality. Uh, like Freud, Melanie Klein, Adler, Jung, Frankel, and others, I just want to give you a sense of the scope of his work. I'll try to stand where I'm not in the way, which is a little difficult. <laughs> a little difficult in this room. He's created his own school of psychoanalysis called Integral Psychoanalysis, later Analytical Trilogy. So this is the ICAT, International Congress of Analytical Trilogy. His science is what we've been exploring for the last week in Kambukita, now here. He's unified the fields of science, philosophy, and theology. You'll hear more about that as we go through the day. He's always seen the human being in his universal dimension. This is important to know, and holds a degree in psychoanalysis from Vienna, studied for three years there with Viktor Frankl and Igor Kurusu. So he has what we call in English a pedigree, a very uh, solid background in psychoanalysis, philosophy, psychology, and sociology too. Uh, his big discovery is of inversion. And as he wrote in his book, Univer I think it was uh, Universal Man, or uh, probably in many of his books he's written about this. The humanity is sick because it's inverted. Okay, so the inversion is the big idea to understand. You'll see this actually when you're learning languages. We have lots of inversions around learning, too. We think that learning is difficult and hard, that work is boring. We have a lot of inversions in society. So this idea is a fundamental and very important one in psychology. Uh, one of the great inversions he talks about in society is from Louis Pasteur. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples here. That sickness comes from outside. Pasteur said human beings get sick because of bacteria, germs, viruses that come from the exterior. This is the germ theory of disease. Every disease caused by a specific and individual microorganism. This has created an enormous problem in the world where pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money because of this. This is a statistic from Marcia Angel, who's a medical doctor and the former editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. She said that the combined profits for 10 drug companies, 10, drug, we say drug in English, you would say medicamentos, no? pharmaceuticals. So 10 pharmaceutical companies in the Fortune 500, this is the top 500 companies, 
in north america ten of those drug companies have more profits lucru thirty five point nine billion more profit than the other four hundred and ninety companies on the fortune five hundred because of this inversion from pasteur we are spending a fortune on drugs pharmaceuticals trying to cure disease from the outside this is a big inversion so uh, this idea that she's put forward in this book is that the drug companies the pharmaceutical companies are making a lot of profit because of our inversion in society Kepi has corrected this saying that our physical symptoms are the result of our psychological conduct that inside the human being is the cause and the cure of our disease not from medicines from the outside okay it's a very complex and controversial idea for medical science but very important one to understand second deviation in science i'm going to talk about albert einstein and we'll hear more from cesar about this later that energy derives from matter material materia you need to extract energy from oil petroleum coal carbon air wind water uh, you need to take an atom and split the atom to generate energy this is causing an enormous destruction of nature this is fukushima still a problem today the radiation is spreading through the pacific ocean we have this pollution we have birds who are destroyed by the oil spills that we saw like in the gulf of mexico a couple of years ago so all of this destruction we're seeing in the world comes because we're trying to extract energy from material another inversion kepi would say this formula of einstein e equals mc squared totally erroneous because matter is a result of energy and this is what we explore with the kepi motor that energy creates matter not matter creates energy this is a disinversion now that kepi has done very important all of these ideas that he's talked about so in his book the new physics knowledge of the phenomena in physics remains so difficult because of one key reason the fundamental lack falta lack of consideration of a previous form of energy which forms all matter and dr kepi is really working a lot with us to understand this idea the energy that comes from the universe and this is very very powerful this cures this gives us energy this drives motors this puts airplanes into the air all of this is an, a new understanding of physics so his work is extremely big very broad and we're going to touch on that a little bit today okay so liberation of the people 1986 the book that brought me to brazil that i received from my dear friend susan berkeley in 19 in 2000, 2000 like 13 years ago i received this book devoured it decided to come to brazil for six months to study and 13 12 years later i'm still here <laughs> i can't kick me out of the country i'm still because the rest is history because of this book he says in here in general the human being has held to the idea that all he needs to do to make life better is to change a few things here and there that is not the answer at all we'll have to change practically everything if we're to attain the well-being that we have a right to enjoy the transformation must be basic it must be total so that's not a small thing when you come to study at millennium you are joining i think a revolution in the way human beings think and act this is what makes it so exciting to study with us and why we have teachers from finland and canada and colombia and sweden and argentina and portugal united states and that that small country south of canada called the united states of america and all over the world austria now people come here to study what it is that dr kepi is bringing in all the areas of human activity so let's start to touch on that 
a bit today. Okay, are you ready? All right. Our first speaker this morning, our dear friend from New York, Leonard Berg. Over the last 40 years, Leonard has worked professionally as a holistic health educator. Holistic, holismo, you understand this idea? The idea of seeing the human being as a complete thing, not as a compartmentalized human being. He's a uh, community activist, a higher education administrator, project communicator. He specializes in soul therapy. That's a fantastic title, soul therapy. A form of psycho-spiritual counseling which gets to the roots of the physical symptoms by exploring the whole human being. Well, it's very important work. He uh, works with the Center for the World's Religions, USA branch, so he has a spiritual approach too. This is a United Nations affiliated NGO or ONGI, as you say in Portuguese. He is also the project and operations coordinator for the Division of Student Success at Pace University in New York and on the board of directors of Stop the Destruction of the World Association North America branch. So a great pleasure to introduce Mr. Leonard Berg. Leonard. Thank you, Richard. So I, I'm very pleased to be here um, to greet you. I think that <clears throat> what is being done uh, in general here, uh, through the work of Dr. Kepi and Dr. Claudia and all everyone else, is uh, nothing short of genius. And when I thought even about the Millennium School and uh, teaching language in a way that enables people to come into the knowledge of who they really are and what our pathologies are. To me, it's pure genius. And it relates to why I got involved in Analytical Trilogy. Uh, he's read to you some of the work that I do, but the important thing I think to understand is that uh, as a person who has always been a spiritual person, a counselor, at one time I was an astrologer. Uh, I discovered one day, also I do massage. I discovered one, uh, that when I was working on my clients, they wanted to talk. So, okay, so you, I work, you talk. We talk, we dialogue. It was a sort of dialectic. And Sometime back in the early 1980s, somehow, some way, I came in contact with uh, my sister here, Susan, and the book by Dr. Claudia, Healing Through Consciousness. And I was astounded. I said, well, this is what I'm doing. This is how I want to do it. <laughs> uh, because I'm also a student of what we call the Kabbalah. It's a Jewish mystery system. And the whole idea of it is to, to get at the root of how things are created. And I was always interested in, well, how is pathology created? You know, we as human beings, we're taught an analytical uh, trilogy. Um, we don't create goodness, love, beauty, God, truth. That's inside of us. But we're good at creating evil, pathology. Huh? So uh, I decided that, um, well, um, I want to further dedicate my life to, to being a, a counselor, to being a therapist. And I felt that if I'm going to be a therapist, it has to be doing it in a way that is consistent with my spiritual orientation, with my lifelong quest to know myself and to know God. And so when I saw the book Healing Through Consciousness, when I began to read the works of Dr. Kepi, I said, well, since my profession is uh, therapy, uh, this is the form of therapy that I want to use. Analytical trilogy. Because it's consistent with my efforts to know myself. 
And what it made me think about is that, and what's so exciting to me about the work of Analytical Trilogy is that in every profession that I see, what's the big problem? Leaves God out. Yeah. Huh? Right? But we can understand in some ways why it leaves God out. And I have to be <clears throat> very frank with you. It's because of religion. Huh? We don't, when I say religion, we don't blame Christianity, we don't blame Buddhism, we don't blame Hinduism, we don't blame Jesus, we don't blame Buddha, we don't blame Muhammad. We look at the way the human being has taken something that was pure and turned it into something patho pathological. Some people have done that, you see. And so we find, I work in a university, and God help you if you mention anything about spirituality. In America, this is a big disease. They don't even want uh, children to have a moment of silence in the beginning of the class. Because it might be religion. Yeah? This is pathological, as Dr. Kepi said, this is totally inverted. You see? So, uh, then the idea becomes, well, since religion has been hijacked, we say in English, taken over too often by people who are pr what we call proselytizing, uh, imposing their religious view, trying to convert you, uh, telling you that if you don't believe in my religion, you're a heathen, a devil, and a sinner, and you're going to hell. You see? Uh, therefore, uh, the, the spiritual aspect of things has been left out of almost every profession. And the exciting thing to me about Analytical Trilogy, it's a very ingenious way, a very uh, beautiful way to get the spirit back into all professions, not just psychoanalysis. The proof of it is you right here. The Millennium School. You're bring, it's bringing the spirit back into the teaching of language, uh, but without imposing religious views on you. Now, of course, I, I work with a center for the world religions. We respect all the religions on the planet. We feel religion is very important because it teaches morals, ethics, how can you argue with, thou shalt not kill? How can you argue with that? Thou shalt not steal. How can you argue with much of the social work that um, religions are doing to help people, to feed the poor? This is beautiful. Uh, even though now um, I have a, uh, my spiritual path is more on the, what you might say the mystical path. I was brought up as a Protestant. But I think uh, I love Jesus more now than when I was in the church. <laughs> because I think I understand universally who and what Jesus was. This because of a spiritual orientation. And so analytical trilogy allows you to be who you are, to be in tune with the spirit that's within you, the God that you worship, without all the nonsense about that people make about religion you see so uh, I don't really have much more to say um, we have some very learned in people learned people here who can give you all the details about uh, uh, you know analytical trilogy the science of analytical trilogy I think the the final things I want to say about that is that uh, I want to talk just a little bit about the conference we just had and, that, and what was exciting about this Congress. You've heard that term essential energy, mm -hmm. ah, essential energy. And um, to me that's very exciting because when I think of essential energy, what I think of is the Holy Spirit, you see? the Holy Spirit, that 
ultimate essential energy that comes directly from the Most High, our Creator. And this essential energy then comes into us in various forms. It, it goes out in the world in various forms. Do you think gravity is anything other than a manifestation of essential energy? How can it be anything else? Hmm? Do you think uh, when the person who uh, practices the martial arts and he goes, yeah, and he breaks that board, where, where, what is that energy? It's not his muscles. It's a, a way in which the Holy Spirit, the essential energy, he, he, he incorporates it. And as Richard was saying uh, about matter in general, uh, it can be a vehicle for the essential energy, but it's not the source of the en essential energy. And so what was beautiful about this Congress was it gave us more details about how essential energy is transformed into energy that we use in the world uh, and that the, the world of science uses but the world of science refuses refuses to acknowledge where this energy comes from they rather think oh it comes from uh, or like he said oil okay and uh, so to me listening to people who are scientists Listening to educators, I listened to uh, 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 Sophia and uh, uh, edu other educators talking about uh, how this essential energy works in the classroom. That's in astounding, that's exciting. That means no matter what field we are in, not just science, we can find a way to help people to get in touch with that essential energy within themselves and bring that energy to bear in their work. So I'm just hoping that all of you who are here today don't limit your knowledge and study of analytical trilogy to learning language. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, using a, a pebble on a whole beach. You see? My, 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 my attitude is, which is this, the message that I brought here to this conference from my point of view was, dare to be a scientist yourself. Dare to research. Dare to go within yourself and discover who you are. Dare to learn things like analytical trilogy to enable you to go deeper into whatever your profession is in life and whatever your relationships are in life. Of course, my wife always tells me, don't be trying that analytical trilogy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I got, I got defenses for that analytical trilogy stuff, man. Hi, hi good morning. Uh, it's, like, it's like we're imprisoned in materialism, right? We're like, we can't get out of this because all of everything looks at things materialistically. And just opening the door to this bigger universe <coughs> makes it much more interesting for learning and for studying. Very great. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Our next speaker is the president and founder of the Great Voice Company in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. A top voiceover artist, that's how I met her, by the way, in that field. She's the author of Speak to Influence, How to Unlock the Hidden Power of Your Voice. She's a certified psychosociotherapist with the International Society of Analytical Trilogy. Co-translated several of Dr. Kepi's books into English, including The Origin of Illness and The New Physics. So she's a, a great one to talk about Dr. Kepi's applications in the area of communication, the voice, and how we express ourselves. Please welcome Susan Berkeley. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. And you know, I married a rock star. I married a Brazilian rock star. His name is Sergio Dias Dos Mutantes. You know who he is, right? 
Serginho, yeah. Tahista. This is a long time ago, a long, long time ago. And not that long. <laughs> <laughs> not that long. Yeah. But that's how I met Dr. Kepi. We were living in New York, and Serginho had uh, panic attacks, right? Attacks de panico. At that time, I, I, I had eloped with Sergio to Rio. Do you know what elope means? It means you get married, like, and your parents say, what a crazy girl. <laughs> I'm not even going to Brazil for her wedding because she is crazy. So I, I eloped with Sergio. I got married in Rio. How romantic, right? right? And then we came back to New York, and he had these terrible panic attacks. You know what this is, right? You can't breathe. You know, it's terrible. So I found uh, an a, a, a Hi, an Claudia. <laughs> Hi, <good morning. laughs> I found an advertisement for Dr. Kepi in a whole life newspaper. And I said, perfect. Sergio can do analysis. And maybe I'll make an appointment for myself, because I'm curious. <laughs> and it was on, the clinic was on the same street where we lived in New York City, the same street. So we went. And Sergio hated it, hated it. But I loved it. I loved Dr. Kepi, I loved Claudia, I loved all these Brazilians that were so warm and friendly. I just fell in love. And unfortunately, Sergio and I split up, which is fine. I mean, he was a big baby. <laughs> he's a great, we're still friends, but he's a big baby. Don't tell him I told you. But anyway, so I continued with this work for now 30 years. And because I did analysis, I was able, when I started, I was a disc jockey. You know what that is? I worked in the radio, and I worked as a waitress because I wasn't making any money, and, you know, my life was kind of a mess. And with analysis, I was able to get stronger, and Dr. Kepi said to me, at the time when he started the Trilogical Enterprises in New York, Susan, you can start your own business. And I said, what? Me? <laughs> and he said, no, do it, do it. Teach what you know and what you love, and people will come and follow our, our uh, orientation here and read the books, and I did. And now my company is, has been in business 25 years, can you believe it? The Great Voice Company. And we, what we do, I'm it, not just me as a, a locutora, as a voiceover artist, but I train people at Bob. So I met Bob, and Rich came to one of my seminars, and um, you know I was dear friends with Diana, um, and and I also work. I wrote a book, Speak to Influence, as Rich says. So I have a big, I have a production studio. And we serve clients from all over the world. We record for them, and we, we record in all languages. We do translation. And I train individuals like yourself in public speaking. You know what public speaking is, right? To speak in public and all of that. To improve their voice and their communication skills. So I'm so honored and blessed, it, but it's because of this work that I am able to be an entrepreneur, to share something of real value with people. And when I had the opportunity to speak at this conference on the new physics and apply it to my work in, in public speaking, I thought, now what a great opportunity, right? And especially at this time in history. So Rich s r showed this book, The Liberation of the People, right? This book was written 25 years ago. It was written for, kind of, for the United States. But unfortunately, at that time, the United States didn't want much to do with it. But Dr. Kepi is a visionary. He's a great visionary. And now here we are at the time where the Brazilian people had this beautiful, peaceful revolution, right? Inspired by Kepi's work. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now the American people are starting to wake up and let's hope they follow a similar path that's peaceful and it's, it's a, you know, a, a world revolution. But anyway, so I, I just came from this fantastic conference and it makes me think, the Cappy Motor, okay? You understand, you know what the Cappy Motor is, the fans and how 
the, what this proves with Kepi's concert, uh, concepts is that um, energy is first, right? So matter derives from energy. And when we speak, we are actually channeling that energy. And I thought, wow, this has fantastic applications to the work, not just of speaking to sell or to give a lecture or whatever, but speaking one-on-one -on -one in, in a second language. It's really what we're trying to do when we're, when we're learning a new language, is we're trying to communicate heart to heart, right? Right? You know something, uh, or you, and you want to share something to help somebody, to lift them up, to make their life better. Or somebody is trying to communicate with you and share something with you, and you want to be able to understand that person so that together the two of you create something better, right? Say yes, please. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens? People go, baby, don't follow it, please. I need to speak English, please. Teacher, slow down. Stop. Make it stop. <laughs> right? Make the love stop, right? So why does this happen? And it doesn't just happen with, with Brazilians wanting to speak English. It happens with Americans wanting to speak, you know, in public, everybody, okay? So what Kepi teaches us is that we are, because we're inverted, you know this, because you studied it, you know what inversion is, we think that our talents are like a fossil fuel. If the more we use them, they will be depleted. Make sense? If, I don't, if, if, if I'm not making sense, say, help, stop, stop. <laughs> okay? so, so we think that our, en our energy is like gasoline or carbon, that the more we use it, the less we have. And this is unconscious. And why wouldn't we think this way? Because the whole world is upside down. So we think that our gifts come maybe from us. So we're only going to use them just a little bit. I share with you, and I share a little bit with you. And now it's noon, so I'm used up, done for the day. <laughs> That's it. No more today. I have to go to sleep, and I have to eat and rest. <sighs> Tomorrow, okay, now I'm ready to give a little bit more. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. Obviously, the more we give, the more we have, right? So when we speak, just like the Kepi motor is taking an energy, it's giving some, uh, a pulse of energy and receives ten times more, hundreds of times more. It gives a pulse and receives a pulse. So we are that way. In order for us, when we speak, to have clear ideas, to have a great presentation, the first thing we start with is affection, is the desire to give to the person, not to look perfect and error-free. So this is what happens with speakers in any language, English to English, Portuguese to English, English to Portuguese, English to French, whatever it is. We are terrified of making mistakes. We're perfectionistic. And so we're like, I don't want to do anything because I could fail, I could look bad, I could look little. What if they have a question that I can't answer, right? What is the name of this problem? Does anybody know? It starts with an N. Narcissism, narcissism, right? Where we want to look perfect and be the center, uh, um, you know, right? Because we're afraid to look like we don't know something, right? So this is one problem with speaking. But the other is envy. Dr. Kepi is always saying to us, you people know so much and you don't want to open your mouth and share what you know. He says, even if there's some mistakes in what you say, 
you know so much more <laughs> than other people and you don't want to share. So every person in this room has something amazing to share. So when you don't at least try, you're depriving me of that and you're depriving yourselves of the opportunity to know more and get more because the more we share, the more we, we allow that energy to move with us, the more energized we become. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So how do they, here's the other inversion, okay? How do people teach public speaking? They go, or languages even, right? They teach languages, except here at Millennium. That's why this place is so amazing. When I came to Brazil for the first time, when I met Sergio, we came to Brazil, and I lived in Rio 25 years ago, 30 years ago. I got a book on Portuguese grammar. And I thought, okay, I'm going to learn the language. <laughs> <laughs> and I opened the book, and I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so you don't learn a language through the particulars. It's impossible. You learn almost telepathically through affection first. I want to give, I want to share with somebody, I want to give something. And okay, I'm going to make some mistakes. Big deal, who cares? We don't care, we Americans, that you can't conjugate the verb properly, right? So that's something beautiful about Brazilians, because when we try to speak Portuguese and we make mistakes, you don't care, you open your hearts to us, you open your arms to us. We want to do the same for you. Give us a chance, please. Give us the chance. So getting back to, to um, the whole idea about how they try to teach public speaking, okay? That's inverted. That I want, when you see a public speaking class like this, run, okay? Do not do this. There's a book in Portuguese called Gestos e... Sei lá, I don't remember what the guy says, but he's, you, they try to teach speaking from the details. So when you get up to speak, if you want to emphasize a point, you move toward the audience. And if you want to diminish, you go back. And you use gestures, but not too much, because then you look like you're flying, you know? And you keep your hands here, or you... You know, it's like retarded, it's crazy. So, and then the other thing they do is the damn PowerPoint. People come out from behind your PowerPoint, please. We have something in English which is called death by PowerPoint. What happens, this is very common. Not, I'm not saying don't use the PowerPoint, I use it too, to help me, you know, you need it. But please, you are not your PowerPoint. Less is more. Less is more. And there's, a, there's, a, there's an energetic reason that PowerPoint puts people to sleep. There's an energetic reason. Why? Because when you use PowerPoint too much and you think you are your PowerPoint, you suck the energy out of the room. Because... It bec it's, this is the wrong kind of energy. <laughs> it's not the essential energy. We are the essential energy. Understood? Yes. Now, we, we are not it. That's not what I mean. But we're, 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 it's coming through us. It's coming through us. Right? And, and not, we don't want the machine. We don't want the machine. Okay? Make sense? Yes. All right. So I don't know how much more time I have, but I mean, I just... You have time. Okay. Ten, 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 ten five, five, minutes. five, ten minutes, yeah. Wow, oh, cool. Okay. Uh, you have enough to say? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have a lot to say for ten minutes. Um, so, you know, I, w I was very, very moved um, at this conference to see how people have applied Kepi's work to their uh, very various areas. Uh, the area of education, when you see, when you see this, uh, was, was a highlight for me. Um, it was wonderful to really tr understand the Cappy motor. So I, am, I have never had a physics class in my life. And that I, I learned that that's a good thing because I don't have to unlearn a lot of what I've learned. It seems almost intuitive to understand essential energy, doesn't it? It really, it's extremely helpful. Extremely helpful. 
and i mean i don't really i just don't know what else to say at this point other than i mean if you guys have questions or something you want to ask me please you know work with our students this week you're here this week yeah no i will be here all week and i will be giving lectures and classes workshops for you at shock at a sorry and and around i'll be around augusta i'm here for you so go ahead and you have a question of course yeah and i use it too i'm not saying look if you can you work without it, great. But I understand. I need it also. You use it as a guide. But please, don't f read the slides. Uh, and don't put so much text on there. And don't, you know, try to keep it to a minimum. Try to keep it to a minimum. And go back, you know, can keep a card uh, on the table. So, so you can, you have it there. You have your notes in front of you. Sometimes the PowerPoint breaks, too. So you really should, be, really. <laughs> Yeah, pictures, wonderful. This is great for slides. A picture is a great thing. So, what else? Did you understand my English? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> All right, so I'll get, I'll get off, but I thank you very much. That was great. If, if you have a chance for you to work with Susan during your I intensive courses here, it would be fantastic. She has a lot of uh, ability to talk about Norberto Kepi's science in a direct application, which affects us all, which is communication. So this will be fantastic for you. And for us, too. It's nice for me to watch. Boy, very good. I was thinking as you were speaking about the power of good action. You know, Susan is talking about this in terms of expression, communicating. You know, you, you, if you, the moment you enter into trying to do something good, to communicate, to connect with somebody else, the moment you do that, you open the door to this energy, and you have more energy. People think, no, I have to get the language figured out first, you know. We sit here thinking, okay, I'm going to say this, and we're conjugating the verb and getting it all organized in our head, and then someday it's all going to come out perfectly. I don't know when that is, but someday it's going to come out. Yeah, sure. about that too. Um, Kevin would say that we, because of the universals, we already have the language inside of us. We have the ability to learn it. And this is proven with babies. And I, I never had kids, but the mothers in here, and the parents in here know that the child speaks the language of first one word, two one word, three word, and then all of a sudden out comes a flood of language. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And, I can testify that my, my son was two and a half years old and he was hardly talking and everybody was worried he's going to be a nitwit. He went over to my mother's house one day and he came back speaking entire sentences, almost conjugating verbs. Yeah, so that, that, where does that come from? That comes from the universals. It's in us and then the parents and society wakes that up. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's in action that we access this. Many people think they have to learn the language first, and then they'll speak it. But actually, it's through speaking that we learn. It's through practice that we learn, through listening, like everything else, right? So this is a very, very important concept that we use a lot. And, uh, and these people who are speaking are bringing that experience to you, which is very beautiful for us to share. And uh, my name is Richard Jones. For those who don't know me, actually, my name is Richard Jones for everybody, but just in case <laughs> you don't know me. And I'm an English teacher at Millennium. I'm a producer of a radio program that spreads Dr. Kepi's work around the world. And I'm very happy to be with a bunch of my dear friends today talking about Norberto Kepi's work. I want to do a quick introduction for you just because I think it's important that everybody know what we're doing and why we're here. So this is Dr. Norberto Kepi. He has an office in this clinic, still sees clients, writes books, and is the orienter of a lot of work that we do in our trilogical enterprises and in our Stop the Destruction of the World Association and in many uh, projects that we work on. Dr. Kepi is the brains behind all of that, okay? in psychology. Uh, one of the great 
inversions he talks about in society is from Louis Pasteur. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples here. That sickness comes from outside. Pasteur said human beings get sick because of bacteria, germs, viruses that come from the exterior. This is the germ theory of disease. Every disease caused by a specific and individual microorganism. This has created an enormous problem in the world where pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money because of this. This is a statistic from Marcia Angel, who's a medical doctor and the former editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. She said that the combined profits for 10 drug companies, 10. Drug, we say drug in English. You Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. We have headsets for those who need a little help. We have professional translations, so is everybody hearing okay? Yes, can you hear okay? Can you hear me? Any translation? No? Some of them don't work, so you have to get the right ones. If they don't work, they can exchange. Hi, come on in. Welcome, welcome. So we are also joined, I think we're being joined, online. There's, we're streaming this event, and I think there'll be some people checking us out from various parts of the world. I know I have some contacts in Europe who are very interested in what we're doing. This is actually the closing of the 19th International Congress of Analytical Trilogy for three years there with Viktor Frankl and Igor Kurusu. So he has what we call in English a pedigree a very uh, solid background in psychoanalysis, philosophy, psychology, and sociology, too. Uh, his big discovery is of inversion. And as he wrote in his book, Univer I think it was uh, Universal Man, or uh, probably in many of his books he's written about this, the humanity is sick because it's inverted. Okay, so the inversion is the big idea to understand. You'll see this actually when you're learning languages. We have lots of inversions around learning, too. We think that learning is difficult and hard, that work is boring. We have a lot of inversions in society. So this idea is a fundamental and very important one. Uh, he's a psychoanalyst, philosopher, social scientist, his background is Brazilian, and... Austrian, is Austrian nationality. Uh, like Freud, Melanie Klein, Adler, Jung, Frankel, and others, I just want to give you a sense of the scope of his work. I'll try to stand where I'm not in the way, which is a little difficult. A little difficult in this room. He's created his own school of psychoanalysis called Integral Psychoanalysis, later Analytical Trilogy. So this is the ICAT, International Congress of Analytical Trilogy. His science is what we've been exploring for the last week in Kambukita and now here. He's unified the fields of science, philosophy, and theology. You'll hear more about that as we go through the day. He's always seen the human being in his universal dimension. This is important to know and holds a degree in psychoanalysis from Vienna. Study